Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art, and I am recording this after the fact. I have uh, decided today to do an impromptu resining tutorial, just very pragmatic, very down to earth, so nothing fancy here. I did do nine tiles today, and you're going to see what I do to get my tiles in good, good condition. And one thing I want to add before I get into the resining is there are two people that I watched in January before I did my first bout of resining. There's a lady from England called Tilly Douglas. She was great. I'll link her below. And Mitchell Grima with Rains and Pores. Excellent, excellent tutorial. So I'm basically taking what they've shown me and what I've learned over my experience, I am applying in this video as well. So hopefully between all of us, you guys get the benefit and um, hope you enjoy the video. I know I'm hoping it'll make you feel more at ease if you're having any kind of resonating anxiety. I know I sure did because I was all wrapped up in everybody's horror stories. It's not that hard, folks. You all can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. It just takes a little organization and pre-planning and the execution of actually doing the process is not that hard. So without any further ado, let me get to the resonating part, how I measure and everything else, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks guys. So before I even get into the resonating portion, I wanna show you what I do to prepare the tiles. So like for this one, I put the frog tape and then I have a piece of paper in the middle that I just tape and uh, it makes it a lot easier to peel this off and not have drips, big drips of resin to try to scrape off or um, sand off at the end. And this round one, I just taped it with the frog tape and cut around it. And then once I get done with the taping part, I take um, some alcohol, I use a spritzer, spray the paper towel, rub the, the top of the uh, tile, the sides of the tile, get it completely free of oils from my skin that would actually repel the resin. And when you're wiping it with the paper towel, you're gonna find that you're gonna get some paint off on the paper towel. And that's fine, it's not gonna hurt anything, just as a warning that you're gonna get a little paint there. But that's what I do to prepare the tiles beforehand. Now, I was gonna do two sets today. I did this this morning. This is gonna be what you're gonna see in the video. I'm not going to get to this today because it's just too late and it's it's not it's not going to work out today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these under a tent for the night so that tomorrow morning when I give, come back out here, they'll be all ready to go. I won't have to worry about dust having fall, fallen on them tonight. So that's the preparation part. And there's more. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> so as soon as I started recording, the school started making a lot of noise, so I'm just voicing over. I'm just showing you here, I added about 40, a little over 40 mils of the epoxy resin. And behind it, I have a container with a little bit of uh, pretty warm water that I'm going to put into this little bowl. You don't wanna mix the water with the resin. The water goes in the bowl and then the resin goes into the warm bath. And what I'm trying to do here is just warm up the resin so that it makes it more viscous, making it more thin so when I go to stir it with the hardener, it's much easier to stir and I am less likely to put air bubbles in it. So this is my table set up. I've got each position numbered. So when I start to pour, I will begin with number one and then go around to number eight. And if I have anything extra, I have other tiles over there that I have as backups. So if there's any excess, I can pour onto another tile to make sure I don't waste waste any. I also have a thermometer here that tells me the temperature. And as of right now, we're pushing close to 90. So I know I'm on, a, on the upper edge of uh, temperature, but it also does work really well when it's warmer. And what else do I want to tell you? Oh, as far as the resin goes, I've numbered my resin. Of course, the caps are different color, but I have number one for the resin, and I have number two for the hardener so that I don't mix them up. And after I get done pouring, I put the caps back on very tightly. 
And that's a good safety tip because a couple weeks ago when I was pouring, my table tipped over, if you can believe it. And fortunately, everything was secure. So that's just some of the stuff I do. And then I have this already prearranged and measured out so that when the tents go on, everything fits underneath just perfectly. Yeah, and the reason why I have an open spot in the middle is so that I have room to put things down. And if I do have excess at the end, I can take a cup and put it in the middle. And then I have all the spots taken up. So once I put it to bed, put the tent on, I don't need to do any more maneuvering. So that works out really nicely. Also safety wise, I have a mask, a respirator and uh, gloves. And I have my gloves double and triple thick. So that if I need to take them off to use my, my propane, I'll be able to uh, do it without leaving that a mess as far as stickiness. So I have to voice this over because I sound like an astronaut in outer space. But anyway, I added part two, which is the hardener to the resin. I had just over 40 mil of the resin, so I added just over 40 mil of the hardener. And I'm ready to stir it up. And stir firmly and gently. Do not beat it. So for the KS resin that I'm using, it does state to stir for four minutes, but I always go a little bit longer than that. And then I put the stirred combination back in the little warm bath for a few minutes just to encourage some of the extra bubbles to come out. But don't freak out about the bubbles, Piz. They will come out when you pour, spread, and torch. And also pop with a toothpick at the end. So a few bubbles is normal. And it took me a while to realize that because when I was watching on the internet, people having their resin come out perfectly bubble-free, I thought something is really wrong. Well, the fact of the matter is it depends on what resin you're using. Different resin and thicknesses are going to either give you more bubbles because it's thicker or not so much because it's thinner. So the type of resin you're using makes a difference. And that's why I warm up my resin, the KS resin, first because it makes it a little more viscous. So for each tile, I pour about 10 milliliters onto each one. And so after I'm pouring, I have about half covered. And then it spreads out to cover about two-thirds the width of the tile. So once I have the original eight covered, I take a look at them, make sure they seem to have good coating, good coverage. And then if I have enough in the container, I will pour onto another tile. In this case, I did have enough, so I'm pouring another tile. So seeing how I'm going to make this the last tile, what I do is I ultimately just pour the cup right on top of it and leave it upside down so that all of the epoxy will just pour onto it. And uh, I'll get good to the last drop on that one. So right now I'm taking that first tile over to the window so I can see really clearly in the sunlight how the resin is uh, covering the tile. All right, everyone. So as best I can here, I'm going to try to show you on tile two and three how I cover the coasters with the epoxy. And I basically take the epoxy I laid down, spread it out to the edges, and then roll over the edges with my finger to make sure that all sides are covered. And then with tile two and three, I am going to take it to the window so I can make sure that it is getting good coverage through the sunlight. But just wanted to show you real quick. So you can see here how having that center space open is very convenient for laying tiles back down and picking tiles up. So here's tile three. Once again, just taking that resin epoxy and spreading it over the to the edges and then over to the sides, making sure the sides are fully covered by rubbing my finger back and forth. And I find using my fingers is great because I can feel where there's coverage and I can feel if I've missed a spot because when you get to a spot that's not covered, it'll feel a little bit like gritty or a little bit like sandpaper. So when I walked away with tiles one through three before, just a second ago, this is where I came over to the window, bright, sunny light, can see the tile. This is just a regular tile. I haven't resined it yet, but this is what I do. I, After I put the resin on, spread it around, I look at it with the reflection of the sun, 
and make sure I've got everything covered. And even going to this level, I still miss spots once in a while. So definitely worth it to take it to a very bright light, sunlight or a light in your house. I'm gonna skip ahead here since the other tiles will be off camera. I think I'm on tile six or seven, but I decide to unleash the container with the resin in it on that last ninth tile just to give it a chance to spread around before it gets too hot in there. So with all the tiles resined now, I go back through all of them and take them to the window and double check to make sure I have good coverage by looking at them very thoroughly in the sun. So I'm gonna skip ahead here too, but that's what I'm doing for all the tiles. And believe it or not, every time I've found one in the batch that has some little section missed, even if it's just a pin prick, it's too much. You gotta get it fully covered and it'll self level. So now with all the tiles double checked, I give them a little torch, make sure that any of the micro bubbles come up and you'll be amazed when you torch it, you'll see like hundreds of little bubbles just pop out of nowhere that you can't even see with the naked eye. So it's very important to, to either flame it or use a heat gun here. So after the flame, I go through all of them again with the toothpick. And notice I still have the mask on. Mask doesn't come off and I'm just popping bubbles, making sure that these tiles have the best chance for a good start in life with a nice flat surface. So once satisfied with all the bubbles, as much as I can get them at this point, I move that ninth bonus tile into the center because I'm starting to make sure everything gets situated prior to putting the, the tent on. So very carefully, I place the tent over those nine tiles and I let these tiles sit for maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes before I come back out and take another look and give them another round of uh, torching. Yeah, that's what I look like. Lovely. <laughs> I'll see if I get to those today as well because the temperature is really great in here. I'm finding it's almost 90. The warmer it is, the better. The more cooperative this resin is. Of course, I don't want to go too far over 90 because I don't know what's going to happen. All right, so uh, thank you. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next side. So this view is so you can get the perspective of how I look at it with the light crucial. <sighs> Not a glamour job. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. So here's one of my boxes of tiles that I've resined. So this one's finished. They're fantastic. There's another set. They really are amazing. Oh, that's my crazy one with the 30 plus petals. <laughs> Look at that thing. That thing is unbelievable. So yeah, this is not the tiles I just did, but this just shows you that what I do works pretty good. All right, just wanna show you that too.